the new component which we created right and uh, i hope there was something which went uh, wrong with our changes which was actually not rendering so let's let's actually see that part right where i think i corrected it um, We'll just discuss that part where exactly it went wrong and then we'll move on. Okay. So, um, if you remember, we created this component, which is home component and the selector was app home, right? Yeah, yeah. And what we did, we went into index, I mean, uh, during the same time, I mean, just to check like uh, if, if we, we should have the same name for selector uh, app component or not, or mm -hmm. change, right? We changed mm -hmm. this one and we moved, I mean, we changed the same app root to index.html and this HTML was open, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And what we did, we we tried to call this the home component again from here. Oh, okay, okay. You remember? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. that's fine. I mean, we, we, try, we tried to do that because this, this HTML was, is, is a startup HTML and if you go to app module, right, if you remember our previous classes, the uh -huh. bootstrapping of any component, right? Whatever component you want to, um, you know, place at a startup, it should always be bootstrap only one, right? So here, yeah. if you remember when we created our component, right, home component, it uh -huh. automatically got added to declarations here, which was fine. Uh -huh. There was no, uh, everything was fine. The uh -huh. only thing which actually went wrong was while actually changing the app component, uh, just to see that. The name we can actually use any name. By uh -huh. chance, we went into index HTML and we were trying to call the home component from here. That was uh -huh. because here we can actually call one of the component which is startup root and everything else need to be done from this component only. Startup root. If you see the app component, I call the app home from here. Uh -huh. so app home is our new app home. You remember these are component. So yeah. I just placed it here because end of the day the bootstrapping is done from app component which means whenever a application starts it automatically kicks off the module module mm -hmm. uh, is uh, by default <clears throat> excuse me uh, by default whenever it starts off it automatically instantiates app component which is our uh, startup root or startup home and in this app component html we placed a new r um, uh, custom component called home component and that's all it, this will automatically trigger okay okay so one mm -hmm. thing to uh, you know keep uh, in mind is whenever we are actually bootstrapping any component we have to bootstrap the root component and from the root component everything else spreads across and okay. whenever we uh, create multiple components the, the, uh, uh, i mean either using a angular client or uh, for instance, manually creating a folder and placing the main component and HTML files. Either way, you have to make sure that the in 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 that specific module, the component is imported and the same component is included within the declarations, so that Angular does know that uh, we are registering the component with the um, uh, I mean the module declarations. Okay. Okay. So that was the one. So now when we actually place it, let me just close HTML. We don't need uh, all these. Things. We don't need uh, app component now because this is already created and you know we have this right. So mm -hmm. we just need. I mean, we, we just even app model now we are clear, right? We just you know um, bootstrapping and providing stuff. Now we will be continuously working on these two now: home component and home component HTML. Mm -hmm. Also, in app component we just gave this app home, right? And we mm -hmm. have this. Uh, so, uh, image and stuff. So now let let me just open up the page. I think I just created you see here homework, mm -hmm. and then this this was the old app component stuff, right? So I can just yeah. remove everything. We'll just keep app home. So let me just remove all other content from app component, and then I just keep. So, so where you get the message homework? Here. So here app home is our component. If you remember. Selector app home is a component, and to this component, the template URL is home component.html. In the HTML, we have homeworks, right? Oh, okay, okay. Marker defined. So this was HTML was defined. Okay. Yeah, this was this was the one which was the complete picture that we whenever we actually tag this component to our main uh, things, 
this should get rendered in our page. Now you can see. Yes. 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 Okay. So, so for the HTML page, uh, yeah, there is no like minimum things, right? Like it can have anything. Yeah, it can have. I mean, so this, what do you mean this HTML, it, this HTML has to be called from home component dot CS, right? Uh, it should, see any HTML should be if if it is a component based HTML, then it should be binded to that specific component. So the template URL it should be binded. Yes, and we have many other types of. We don't even need HTML actually. There are multiple ways how we can actually get it a template. Template for see whatever we are talking about, we are talking with with respect to component. Okay. For a component, mm -hmm. we can have a HTML file which is binded using template URL. For a component, we can have a CSS file which is binded to uh, the component. Style. Exactly. And mm -hmm. selector for the component is mandatory, which actually represents or denotes um, you know how how this component can be called from an external HTML components. Okay. Or or okay. say external templates as such. Okay. So that is the startup app home. The bootstrap, sorry, not yes, the module. Every, see, for yeah. every module, you have to bootstrap one one uh, component to start up, and that component will all uh, you know um, exports others. If you see the root component which we created, absolutely. so in that uh, in that bootstrap module, mm -hmm. so what are the main we should have? Like it, it ng module is compulsory, and uh, other properties are metadata is compulsory for that, right? Like. Are module? you talking about the app module or? Yeah, app module. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. So see, see, most of the times, right? You'll just, you'll just leave the app module. You'll just work on, I think, uh, two or three major things. One mm -hmm. Is whenever you create a component, you'll be registering it. Okay. And whenever you want to uh, create a global imports, you'll be using imports. And so whenever... registering is uh, using imports here. Yes. No, no, we'll come to this import zone. Don't, don't actually get into the resting part or uh, that's why I'm not, if you remember, I, I didn't even speak about providers, imports and importers and I mean, providers, imports and few things about ng module, right? Because I didn't want to confuse during our initial sessions itself. That's why as of now, we're just talking about declarations and bootstrap. Okay. Bootstrap is the one which we bootstrap per module, we bootstrap which component to start up and declarations are Okay, to this module, which is my, see, when you say ng module, right, Angular automatically understand, oh, okay, this is one of the module, which I have to register. Perfect. So to this module, what components do we have? Okay, these are the components which are, yeah, which are registered with the, with this module. Okay, fine. Among these components, which is the kickoff component? Okay, this is a kickoff component for me, which is app component. So automatically, whenever this module is kicked off, this will this will be uh, triggered and when this app component is triggered in this app component the html is app component of html so in this app component of html if you see we are calling app home okay so html the way we should call a component is uh, with that name and closing tag okay yes so the, uh, yeah okay yeah here yeah it all, it's all whatever selector you normally give. So with that selector, you can call. The selector is nothing but a HTML, <coughs> excuse me, HTML. That, that is something which is called as a custom template in AngularJS. We create custom templates and custom templates can be called call using the HTML uh, element. So if you go to the app module, right? Yeah. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. So when we create automatically, what and all will come like, uh, nothing will come like, like, um, uh, I think only only we added home component yeah. uh, in the import and declarations, right? Everything came automatically, right? Remaining yes. things. Yes. I mean, if you are using a client, um, uh, Angular client CLI, mm -hmm. and create a component, it will automatically create a component folder, uh, component files, and it will automatically update the specific module uh, here, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, with that specific component, and it will automatically update the declarations of the new component created. Okay. So for every any module, uh, that browsing browser module, app routing module uh, is automatically comes right. We didn't add that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, these are defaults. I mean, whenever we create any uh, uh, application, right? 
I mean, mm -hmm. the, using NGNU, uh, so these imports are by default which are created, right? Because these two actually are required for module and, and, and mainly to kick off the uh, platform browser. So that's mm -hmm. why they are added. We can actually add more if you have any custom things already created. Yes, but by default, these are added whenever you actually start, you know, kick off your application using client, uh, using a new app creation. Okay. We'll understand more. I mean, uh, as we know clearly about bootstrap and declarations now, any questions on bootstrap and declarations? No. Perfect. So same way we'll understand others too, okay? Not to worry. It, it's only that we are not using it in, in these sessions. That's why I'm not giving you an example here. But uh, as we go, as, as there was a requirement of understanding declarations because we have to register the home, I mean, whatever component we created, that's why we understood this and this, okay? Yeah, okay. And, and you, are, are you aware, like, where exactly we're kicking off this module? I mean... Um, app this, module? Yeah, for instance, we have a module, but where exactly is this module getting triggered? See, I can have multiple modules, right? Okay, um, so I think I think we can use this class for a quick recap. Now, okay. I have one module here, but if you remember our previous class, uh, we discussed that one application can have multiple modules. Remember that? Yes, yes. Let yeah. Me just, let me just open this so that I think it's good that we're going through this. Yeah. yeah. So, sorry. Hey, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, nothing. I'm just. We listening. discussed one example. Yeah. Employee, we discussed. Employee can have yeah, here, personal here info go. and appraisals, two modules. And can right, have. Right. Let me just uh, maximize so that you can see it clearly. If you remember, we have an, we have an employee, two different mm -hmm. modules we discussed personal info and appraisals, for instance, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, let's, say, let's say they have two different modules, right? Now, can mm -hmm. we have all modules triggered at a time? Uh, I don't know. No, I mean, we can't, right? Because, for instance, for a module, let's say for a, I have components, right? These are components, if you remember. Mm -hmm. These are components we call. Now, question here is, can in a module, can I bootstrap as many as components as, as I want? Yes. No, can I bootstrap? Bootstrap meaning? No, can bootstrap I also only one, one component. Exactly. It will call other components, right? Now, what is the meaning of bootstrap? See, bootstrapping meaning is fine. You can have hundreds of components. I, I I get it. But what you'll want to understand out of 100 components, which component is a base or a root component which I want to trigger, which means I'll give one of these, right? So what I'll call, I'll, I'll just create one more component, base component call. For instance, personal info root, for instance, right? So this mm -hmm. is my this is my base component, let's say, right? And in this base component, I'll arrange all these things, all address, bio, roles, and everything. Maybe I'll call these components on top of this. So then, which one I have to register to this module? It's a personal info root need to be bootstrapped in module. Is it clear? Yeah, okay, got it. Perfect. Now, let's go one step high. Let's say for for in my in my application, I have multiple modules. Okay. Let's say in my application, I have multiple modules, right? Now, a module does know which component to start, right? Yeah. Now, my question to you is, how can my application know which module to start? Do you remember that point? Mm, no, I didn't remember. Perfect, perfect. Perfect. Let's, anyways, no, let me explain that. Good that uh, we discussed this now. You remember main.ts? Yeah, yeah. So main is the uh, one. See, it's not about main.ts. Wherever we normally call the platform browser, right? And bootstrap mm -hmm. module. So that is automatically registered in Angular. Now, if you see here, we yeah. have a platform browser. Now, now I remember you talked about bootstrap module. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So here, what we do, we, we bootstrap a single module to this. And that module is going to be the base module for all, which means I have a personal module. And to this module, you remember I said module to module, they will actually uh, talk to each other to create the complete view. Okay. But end of the day, there should be one module which should get bootstrap. 
Excuse me. And to those modules, there should be one component which should get bootstrap, and everything else is, is kind of connected. Mm -hmm. Okay, is it clear now? Yeah, clear. Perfect. And and now we know that you know how the app module is getting triggered here because. So is it a reserved word platform browser dynamic is a reserved word, right? Like. Yeah, I mean, no, no, it's not a reserved word. And, uh, I mean, th this is actually, this is one of the service in Angular. So, which means, right, this, I mean, to in this context of file, we are actually using this, which is actually a, a, a pre, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I would, I would call it as like a reserved word because the meaning of reserved words are different. Uh, reserved words, for instance, if you have a class, CLSS class, right, uh, um, and then uh, uh, across my application, across my application, I can't use class as a variable, correct? Yes. But I mean the same keyword here, right? What I can do, maybe I can go to the component here. I mean, uh, uh, maybe here I can just use like private so and so. Oh, sorry. Let me just copy the variable here. I'm just you know discussing this only because the meaning of the meaning of uh, reserve word is completely different. Okay. I can use this as a variable too in different files. But whenever you are actually what? importing it, at that context, you should use, uh, at that context, you should use this as a, uh, you know, pre-registered keyword. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a, that's a, uh, that's a beauty we have. It, it is not, it doesn't actually. So it. whatever is there after at the rate angular slash, all those are services like, uh, like core platform browser dynamic, all those. Which one? Which file you are? Uh, the first two lines, the same file where you are. The first two lines. Uh -huh, okay. So what are those like? Those are uh, those are like modules again, or services, or yeah, what so are? See, they they are like you know internal services we have across each of the Angular. So for instance, if you see the Angular, uh, if you remember when we actually get the versions of Angular, right? There are multiple things which gets installed as part of Angular. Right. Yeah. And some yeah. of them are core, and these are whatever we are importing here, right? If you see there, these are mm -hmm. some of the services, right? See, when I say some of the services, they 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 would have actually internally bootstrapped with multiple modules or it's all internal architecture they have, right? Oh. But end of the day, this is a service we are actually using, right? For instance, to start something, and this is something which is we are actually using to kick off my application with a certain module. Right. Similarly, this is a module which are we have, which is kind of a concept of an Angular module we created, and this is one. This is something which I want to register with my initial bootstrapping of a uh, of a application start. That's how we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you see this environment again, I think uh, these are the ones which we have created. You remember this environment? Uh, I think this environment will be uh, here. Right. So, I mean, when I say we are we created, I mean, I mean to say like when we created a new application, right? So it automatically uh, created few environments, right? Like environment which is a constant export, saying that whether it is a production or not. Now, why production or not? See, based on the production flag side, right, it does something. Like it minifies. Um, um, I mean, um, whatever JavaScript it generates out of our compilation, even those JavaScript it minifies. So minification is nothing but if you remember right, um, I hope I mean in your previous. Uh, uh, yeah, I know we used uh, before uh, other minification files. Perfect, perfect. So every every file like JavaScript or CSS, whatever is related to client side, it gets minified. Jquery will have minification files. Exactly, yeah. they they'll be minified, they'll be bundled, and bundled uh, files will be kind of exported to for uh, uh, as a binaries for uh, uh, app builds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so now the connectivities are clear now. Yes, sir. Yeah, on that day I think you know it's because of a, we just changed name and in the same flow, right? We started actually placing it in index. We, we should never do that. Anyway, so it's good that we got that uh, problem because with the so, problems we have some more. Yeah. So can you show me what and all folders it will create? Like it will create home we created. So whenever a new project comes, mm -hmm. it will create app. App is a folder, right? Uh, it's not a folder. Yeah, yeah, app is a folder. Yeah, app is a yeah. folder. Everything, so, is, everything is a folder. So, uh, see, whatever you see on my screen now, everything is actually created whenever we create a new application. Only thing which we created is a new component called home, 
so when we created that it automatically created that component inside app if you see here home so these are the files which it created it also created a spec file but we deleted it because we don't need that now in this context and then this component is automatically updated in my in our module that's how it does clear money yeah perfect so if you want we can create one more component i mean just a test component and then see that's fine we can do it one more time so let me just uh, uh no i'm just um, trying to understand like what are yeah. like what will fine, come fine. initially no like. issues no issues yeah it, it's all good it's all good initial classes it's better to understand the roots of it yeah it's all good i'm okay to actually go through this again uh, so that no you we know clearly let me let me create that's fine that's fine not a problem so let me create a new one so ng so we use g which is generate component we have right so this time let's say i want to create a personal info right personal info component okay Enter. now and, and let's see what role are getting created here so if you see here here itself it will it will actually give what exactly it created it will create all the files required under new folder called personal info if you see here if i go to personal info here it created it created a component class let me clo uh, close this for a while it created a component so this component is automatically registered as that component and it contains its own selector template html it just says personal info works it just a simple markup and it contains css file spec file and the a main component which is registered across so these are the four files created with a folder and then if i go to <coughs> excuse me if i go to module.ts uh, personal info component which we created is, is automatically imported here and this import is registered with the name called personal info component and that is kind of registered in the declarations oh it will automatically comes okay yeah i mean i mean when we use the, this command right when we use this command from client yes we we get it we we get this automatically yeah we thought we, i thought we, add, we should add here we should come to module and add no no, no no if you are using the command from uh, angular client right it does everything for us mm -hmm. it does everything for us yeah that's a beauty here uh, unless you are in uh, angular js which doesn't have much client tools to create all this but uh, this is very supportive yeah okay and this personal info i can again call from here for instance let me go back anyways i think browser is running here yeah, it's running i can go to home component here for instance i can just what's a selector name i have i can just this app personal info is a selector name i have i can go to app component.html you remember app component is the one which we have uh, here let me just include app personal info too let's uh, go back and see it says personal uh, one second so for that to run what you did so you came here and added this uh, html tag yeah and, and it automatically runs because if you remember our ng serve is uh, still running we started yeah. yeah i kept it running because anyways uh, just let me kill everything so yeah. as of now for instance let me remove it if i remove it and save right it doesn't work why because my watcher is not running watcher is nothing but our when we run ng serve it will automatically create a watcher and it it will be looking across my application to see if any file is actually getting updated or deleted or if any content is updated if if anything changes it will automatically build the file and publish it into the listening server that's how it works as of now if you see i remove this um, uh, personal info but it still is same even if i refresh this see i refreshed it now my it, it will go down why because ng, I, I just killed the ng serve right which means my server is down now so let's go back and say yeah and let's go back and say in my folder ng serve so ng serve here so when i actually call this command it does everything it it compiles builds deploys starts the server and keep it running and from there on ng serve is like you know once you start it will it will it will always be running until you kill the terminal or until you stop it it will be running 
So after you uh, type ng serve and uh, press enter, mm -hmm. you didn't run anything, right? Like a fire. No, 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 nothing, nothing. No, I didn't run anything. That's all. You just like ng serve. Now this will take care of everything because everything is is inside this ng serve. Mm -hmm. You don't have to run anything else. Just keep your browser up, and here itself it will give you which URL to browse. Your ng serve mm -hmm. itself it will give which I mean where exactly it is listening. Just copy this. Uh, mm -hmm. host and make sure <coughs> excuse me and make sure that you're just browsing the same url which it, act, it actually published into this okay unless <coughs> unless you just you know block this port for some other use right block see when i say blocking port which means let's say for example you're creating any other uh, service which which is kind of listening to this port right then whenever you actually move into ng serve maybe it will make it may create a new port for instance then make sure that you're using that port in your local host to serve Browse your application. Okay. Okay. It is same like you know in our web application, for instance, ASP.NET, right? Two different applications. When you run, it it actually picks up uh, two different ports, uh, which are actually kind of a free in your uh, in your local server, right? That, that's the same same. Uh -huh. Yeah. So now, for instance, my ng server is running. Now let me just uh, now I'll just open up the personal info. We'll include the path. Uh, and just save it and come back to browser see here when i save the file it is compiling now right all my uh, new files and stuff whatever files got changed it bundled up pushed it into the server and it automatically uh, i mean uh, uh, updated the files and you can see my page <laughs> that's how it is clear any more questions across modules uh, components, registering. Um, no. Okay, fine. So uh, as you asked, right? So let's let me give you some more picture on this. Uh, so in ng server, right? If we know that you know. Uh, anyways, you have an idea on minif minification. Minification is just like uh, everything. Like it will remove all the new uh, space characters. It will remove the new um, a new uh, um, new line um, things. It will remove all the un unwanted. Um, you know, uh, characters used and stuff, and it'll 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 minify. Minify yeah. is just uh, creating yeah. a same version of file with removing uh, all the unwanted. Now, what is bundling? Bundling is nothing but uh, combining multiple JS files into one JS file. I mean, to to talk in a very raw form, bundling is nothing but let's say, for example, I have uh, twenty different JS files which are kind of a different uh, things across. Uh, same application, right? What I'll do instead of actually creating those many files and minify them, just bundle them into one file, right? Uh, bundle them into one file and then just uh, publish it. So those bundled things are actually created into JS. If you see here, we have a main.js, which are kind of a completely bundled ones. We have polyfiles, we have styles, even the styles, right, which are CSS. Uh, or SCSS, whatever we created, which are converted to CSS, they are again bundled into JS form only. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then all these bundled uh, uh, chunks, whatever we have, right, are actually uh, thrown into uh, our uh, deployment uh, server, which is our, our listening listening uh, uh, virtual directory we have. And as soon as it is actually uh, pushed, the server will automatically get uh, the yeah. development server will automatically get those files and up and run. So what is that map file dot map? Which files? Map dot yeah, map. Files are the, it, these are like a pointer files to the bundles actually. So these okay. are like you know yeah these are like a pointer files to bundle files. So for every bundle created, you will have a map file. So we won't modify these files, right? We no, just use them. Exactly. We never even go and see how it is minified. We never, because once you have your files running, once you uh, compile it and see, that's all. These are the things which are getting generated. Mm -hmm. so this, is, this is like an exe you're generating. So once you compile your application and uh, once you have a output exe, that's all. You use that exe. Okay. Okay. That's how it is, kind of. We know what is uh, the significance of selector, and it completely depends on what what convention you want to use. Every application or every project will have its own convention to define components, how um, custom directories can be called. It all depends. Okay, but yes, you can change anything anywhere. Okay, mm -hmm. but it has to be unique across the same 
uh, app so that you know you're not actually colliding this with other other custom directive names you have okay that's one <coughs> moving on we have something called template url so in the template url right um as of now what we saw is let, let me close this so till now right template url we always used to have a html it's 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 i mean that's how the um i mean um uh, we normally use like okay keeping everything in a different uh files like you know whatever this file is doing let it do like, whatever this component is doing let it do like it's a single responsibility principle we, we have right that's why we have a separate template yes it does have a html and html you can just give, define all your markups because most of the times we actually love to uh, write markups on a dot html not as a simple text some sometimes some quick components you also need different format that i don't have to create all these files all together now in order to do that we have a beauty here so in the same component right if you define with a url then yes you have to give the template url when i say template uh, in your mind just keep it as a html when i'm calling anything as a template right from now on just keep it as that we are actually talking about a html markup it can be a separate html file or a same file with some markup okay okay now so the template you are let's convert this to uh, another form which we have for template is if so let's say that this uh, um, component i'm actually creating is a very simple component and i don't want to actually give a separate html files and everything i just want to have a complete html markup here itself yes you can do that so just make it as a template which is a different uh, metadata we have inside component and then inside this you can just have a markup let's say i have a markup called h1 close h1 a simple markup say this is my home so this now this is completely disconnected with the html file you have html file or template file you have now everything we are creating is completely inside the template now let's go back and see the browser see this is my home now it actually created a very good um, uh, markup whatever we have completely which we have defined within the template now this is one more way we can actually use template now in the same way i mean uh, here whatever markup you are actually giving if you give any markup within the single quote right it's going to take one liner like it doesn't know if you give multiple lines for instance if i have one more see it doesn't like if i just say dave this is new line here now it doesn't understand what to do the file itself now you have to use something called backticks so the backtick is something which can be used for many things so one of the thing is you can actually have multiple lines of markup right and normally right, when we are actually trying uh, trying to kind of, kind of create a markup it will have so many lines and stuff so this will be uh, now this will understand that okay these are the ones which I, he can actually allow us to create a multiple lines now here you can see this is my home and this is a new line uh how what is that you told something uh quotes it's a it's a back tick uh, a back tick is nothing but yeah. uh, in your toggle uh uh, in your toggle but i mean when you see this symbol the, do you see this symbol button in the yeah yeah. Symbol, yeah below that one more symbol is yes, there that is so, the one oh. exactly okay. in i mean it depends on a keyboard you are using but yeah if you use, i mean in my keyboard it's like if i use something called this one i mean just click on the button it will create my back ticks if i click on control and toggle oh sorry control control and uh, or sorry con shift and uh, same button it will give me the other so yeah mm -hmm. that's a back tick. yeah i yeah, got it yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah so now if you see the same template is again giving up me my markup i have so now i'm actually completely disconnected with my component here okay so you can't you can't you can just have all your templates everything defined here itself okay so this is how we normally use the template either give it mm -hmm. a URL or give it a markup directly in a comment. This, this is one of the very beautiful feature you have in Angular. If you mm -hmm. have few components which need to be directly binded, we don't need unnecessary files. 
reducing unnecessary files is again uh, gives up a so much of productivity okay now, okay let's get into the next one is styles url same way if you see the styles url as of now we don't have any but yeah we can actually have one for instance let me say i want to give some styles for my div right let's say um uh, simple like let's use color let's say i'm gonna use blue so so my css is is kind of a bootstrap with the styles here so uh, i mean yeah my css is completely minded or connected to my home component here which means whatever css i normally mention here so these will get applied to the markups or templates i'm actually giving on this right so for instance okay. if i go back here if you see any div uh, i'm not sure if this is visible let me just give some other color maybe red and maybe i'll convert it to some h1 because we're actually using the h1 css so if you see here <laughs> So I, I, I'm just saying that, okay, H1, I want to give this. See, it's a normal CSS. You can give anything. The point here is we are actually connecting the CSS file to this component. And you can see the beauty. This CSS is actually getting applied to the respective template markup we have. Yeah. So that's a beauty here. So this will get actually applied to the respective template. Now, point here is this is one way of using mm -hmm. styles URL. So which means you can have multiple URLs of a styles. Okay. So that's a point here. I mean, it's not that, you know, I can actually create uh, multiple CSS, right? It's not just, uh, it's, there should not be any restriction saying that, okay, fine. I mean, I can actually give only one CSS. Yes, I can have multiple CSS from external, from internal. I can I, actually, you can even give the CSS CDN URLs and stuff, right? So that's, yes. that's why we have multiple. Okay. But anyways, you can actually give something called your uh, CSS path here. Okay. Now, in the same way we use a template, we also have a feature in style saying that you don't have to create a separate file altogether. Whatever you mm -hmm. want to do, you can do it in a same file also. Now, even mm -hmm. that option we have. So, what I can do, I can just remove this path. Mm -hmm. right? And I can just say here like a style. I don't want to give a style. You can see here, I have mm -hmm. styles and style. Mm -hmm. Right. So, if I give styles URL, then you have to mention either a file or a CDN path for CSS. Mm -hmm. otherwise what i can give i can directly give something called my css within this here again for instance let me use a tick here oh, sorry tick so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna use that same h1 here itself i want to give h1 color let's say this time i'm giving some green right i mean here we gave some some color for this just to understand the differentiation of this i just gave a same h1 for color green so let's go back and see you can see here so this time yeah. is getting applied mm -hmm. now, uh, now you know why i'm using tick right i don't have to explain if you want to get yeah, anything yeah. in a multiple, multiple lines to accept. multiple lines just use tick and it will automatically allow you to actually have rendering that part here so here yeah i can now give anything so let's say i'm going to give some div class Let's say I'm going to give color. Let me give this as red so that um, I can see red better. So here I have my styles given for separate uh, specific to these I have. Fine. Mm -hmm. So any question here? No, I'm good. Perfect. So now this is these are the main things which we're going to have across select arts, templates and styles. Okay. So either you give a path or a template, it doesn't matter. So so now my question to you is instead of my preference in my question to you is how do you want to move on like so mainly about template not so anyways we are not going to see much of templates as such because our styles as such because we're going to more concentrate on template so you want to go to template to use the actual markup here or you want to use it here you know, anything is fine yeah. yeah okay fine then so my normal i mean for a small things i normally use the same here but but let's use this because it will actually kind of give us a good markup feel and stuff. Okay. Let me click okay. the CSS <laughs> and let's go back to component here. Now what <laughs> we'll do, we'll just use a template URL. Okay. And styles, let, let it let it be the same styles and stuff. Let's use the same uh, template you have here. And then <laughs> we'll, we'll be using these two files. My component okay. file and the component uh, HTML. Okay. okay. So, yeah. So if you want to keep this, we can, um, I can just 
comment this out and then use the same for instance just let me just comment it out here so that when you get this file you know that something we use this okay okay and then let me just get it back to template url so i'm gonna use my template url i want to give some path here so now i'll give i have my home component which is home dot component dot html is my template which is this one right and styles anyways either you can actually keep it or let me just change this one so the uppercase lowercase not matters right like matter. when it doesn't giving matter. the file name yes it doesn't matter i can give uppercase let me just show you that i can give uppercase here you can see it works i can give mm -hmm. lowercase component here saved it you can see it works okay mm -hmm. so you have to give a uh, true path that's all mm -hmm. and then let me just leave this uh, um, styles also i have my Dot component. I'm just taking a help of it. That's all. Nothing else. Okay. So CSS. Okay. Now if you go back. Can we drag and drop like Visual Studio? Um, I mean, uh, if you are using Visual Studio, yes. Or not in this. <laughs> I mean, okay. here. I mean, yeah. Even if you drag and drop, it it will open up the file. Actually, I mean, that's a Visual oh. Studio. Code. It's it it all depends on a, a editor, right? So here, oh, yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever file you want to open and stuff, it will automatically open that file. Actually. Mm 